The following contains content not suitable for children under 18. Parental discretion is advised. Therefore, I tried to dig the earth and get out. <laughs> I did get out. But I sat there next to the tomb and cried again. My God, what a life, huh? Okay. She was crying to herself, thinking, I don't know what kind of terrible deeds I have done in the former life. That in this lifetime, I had to encounter so many disasters, pain, sorrow, and suffering, thirst. Yeah, how many times I almost die and, and live again and come back and to life and die again and come back to life again. How terrible. And I observed that probably, you know, hundreds, thousands or millions other uh, same, same uh, female sex like me, uh, also married, and I think this is all, this is all like uh, a yoke, you know, on your on the female's life, like imprisonment. Yeah, is only slavery. Yeah, and making your your life more and more uh, ignorant and suffering because we don't know a better life. We don't recognize a more noble way of life, a better path to go. We do not know how to step up into the true path to liberation and the true path to know the, the reality, yeah, the another um, higher than this physical life, so that we will not be able to uh, be free from this mundane prison. It is because of ignorance and uh, all kind of uh, sensual desires that make us slaves, like uh, lead us into slavery. Yeah. And when you already realize that this terrible truth of human life, of, of being a housewife life, then it's too late. As if we we are always being dragged again and again into this kind of traps of sensual pleasure and greed and lust for fame, you know, and fortune and happiness, which is delusive and elusive happiness. Therefore, we have been and will be always transmigrating into this circle of life and death and suffering forever. Yeah. Now I just suddenly remember when she was crying like that, and then she suddenly remember that uh, one time there was a person from the family of Shaka, I mean the, the Buddha. Yeah. He has become a monk, renounced the world, to practice the truth, and now he has already attained Buddhahood. Okay, I think now I should go to him to take refuge in him so that I can escape suffering. So I got up, keep walking, but my b body is full of pain, and uh, my stomach is also very, very hungry and uh, thirsty. And it's a long, long way to where the Buddha is, and it was a very dangerous uh, way, you know, dangerous journey for a woman alone, you know, hungry, thirsty. But I did not mind. I was determined to go to find the Buddha, to liberate me, to help me. Uh, I keep walking and asking the way until I found myself in the forest of Kihuan. Yeah. At that time, it's already dark, you know, the night fell. But from long way, I have seen the Buddha already. I have seen him bright as a mountain of, uh, of gold. Yeah, a very dignified, very uh, uh, majestic, but full of compassion and mercy. 
He is truly an extraordinary being, He's not from this world. Yes. He is definitely able to liberate heaven beings as well as human beings. So at that time, I was beyond joy. And I knelt down on the road and looking toward his direction and prayed to be liberated. And then the Buddha came to me. At that time, I was kneeling on the ground. My body has nothing to cover. I feel so ashamed. I have to try to cover myself with my hands. Yeah. The Buddha asked Anand, a reverend, to bring me a clothes to wear, a piece of clothes. And then I went to the Buddha and prostrate at his feet and then tell him everything about my life up to now and beg him to let me become his non-disciple. Yeah. And then the Buddha asked Anand to bring me to the nun, great compassionate way, that's her name. I translate it like that, to teach me, yeah. And then, uh, and then she give me the bichuni, the the nuns uh, precepts, yeah, and make me become a priestess. And then he, she teach me the four noble truths, yeah, how to escape suffering and birth and death, transmigration and all that. Yes, I was very diligent in my practice and keeping my precept as a nun. Not very long, I truly understood, truly realized that the life is truly a suffering and the Buddha's teaching and the enlightened saint's teaching is truly a path to re- liberation. And then I could even understand my past lives and I can see my future lives. And I can see what kind of bad deeds, what kind of wicked deeds I have done in the, in the past lives, and so that in this lifetime I have to bear the consequences. So some of the new nuns asked the Pichuni, wonderful, Reverend Mother, in the past life, what kind of sin did you commit? so that in this lifetime you suffer so much. Please, can you, can you tell us so that we can learn something? So they say, yes, I will tell you. Pay attention. And they say, yes, we will. Long, long life ago, my long time ago, uh, at that time, long, long, many, many <laughs> lifetime ago, long time ago in the past, at that time there was uh, a noble rich family, has no children, has no children with the first wife. So he uh, married a concubine, the second wife. Yeah. And this concubine, this wife is very beautiful. The second wife is very beautiful. So he really favor her very much. And she is her, his favorite. Yeah. And both of them are loving each other passionately. Uh, life is good. Love is great, yeah. And not long ago, she gave birth to a son even. Oh, God, it's even more favorite. You must know, you should know in the old time, even now, giving birth to a son. For example, even now in China, give birth to a son means (laughs) good. Give birth to a woman, no. We are still second-class citizen, okay? Because a man can carry the family's tradition and business and name, you see? So that means the family name will live longer, continue. Mm. But the woman born has to be married far away from home and take the name of the husband. And whatever children born, it will be the name of the stranger over there. Understand? <laughs> Nothing to do with wife family anymore, for example, like that. Yeah. Therefore, oh, since then, he even loved her more and more and more, you know. Anything she wants is immediately she gets, yeah, like that. 
And then the first wife was thinking to herself, oh, since I marry him, we both work very hard together, husband and wife, and uh, sparing, you know, and saving in order to become rich like today. Mm. Hey, but now in the future, I'm sure only the second wife will have it all. Yeah. It is so useless for me. I will have nothing. Wasted all my time and my youth. Now working hard for somebody else to enjoy. Yeah. I think it's better I kill the second wife. Son. She was thinking like that. So she was thinking like that. So she used a very long a needle. Yeah, long needle. Wait until everybody sleeps, she came and killed the baby. And of course, the second wife, oh, crying day and night, day and night, day and night. You know, non stop. And, and then after a while, and then after a while, she was thinking, my son was not sick. Nothing wrong with him. Suddenly, he died like that. I think it's the first wife killed him. And then she came and confronted the first wife and asked her, My son has done no harm to you. What sin has he done that you kill him like that? And of course the first wife said, What are you talking about? Huh? Uh, why are you talking crazily like that? I, I swear, yeah, if I kill your, your son, then... Uh, uh, life after life, my husband will be bitten dead by uh, snakes. And if I have children, then uh, either they drown or the tiger will eat them. Or uh, the wolf will eat them up. Or I myself will be buried alive. And then all my family will be burned in fire to death. Everything happened, as she said, as you knew already from the story. Okay. So, all of you should know, the first wife of that noble, rich family man, that life was me, because I did not know about the karma and the consequences of karma. Therefore, I wickedly killed the baby son, and I uh, swear as if uh, nothing will happen. Therefore, in this lifetime, I had to suffer that much, as exactly as what I have wished in my terrible oath, because I didn't believe that this anything could happen. So the 500 new Bichuni, the 500 new nuns asked her again, a reverence mother, but what kind of good deeds have you done in the former life, so that in this lifetime, you are fortunate to meet the Buddha and even uh, attain, you know, liberating a level of consciousness. Could you please tell us? So she said, yes, pay attention. Long, 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 long time ago, long time ago, <laughs> in the country called Balanai, yeah, probably this country is uh, continuous for many lifetimes, eh? Just like, I don't know, Vietnam or French, or, you know, it's always the same name. <laughs> There's another country, uh, this is the same country, Balanai. Always this country pop up in many stories, yeah. Because this story probably happened in India, you know. <laughs> A lot of story happened in India, and the same earth. Mm. So that means our earth exists long time ago. And uh, humans has existed long, long time, aeons, aeons ago, before us. And maybe the planet was destroyed, uh, uninhabitable, like the Mars right now, for example, like that. Yeah. And then we re revive again. Some humans survive somewhere, and then re, you know, regroup and rebirth and <laughs> resource again. Yeah? yeah. Make country again. Make human again. Make babies again. And, and life. Bloom again, yeah. In that country, Balanai, there was a mountain, 
Yeah. Uh, name uh, Fairy Mountain. Yeah. Or Heaven Mountain. Yes. Uh, in that can in that mountain in forest there are many of uh, uh, Partakya Buddhas and uh, many lesser um, saints and many other saintly beings. Yeah, even though not Buddha, but also practice there and saintly people. Yes, at that time there was a Pratekya Buddha who went to the city for alms, yeah? begging for food. Yes, and. Uh, there was a, a lady from a noble family, yes, uh, very happily making offering to this Pratekya Buddha, yes. Because of her sincerity and happiness, you know, truly sincere to make offer to him, he saw his uh, real status. So he fly in the sky and uh, demonstrate uh, 18 of his uh, magical power for her to see. Yeah, because of that, she was so awe, and then she kneeled down on the ground and looking up to him, pray thus, I prostrate in front of the great reverence, saint, please, in the future, help me to be able to attain a, such a spiritual level as yours right now. Yes. You all should know that a noble family lady, noble and rich, you know, family lady at that time, it was one of my uh, incarnation. Yeah, because I was so sincere and respectfully make offering to this saintly being, and then I vow, you know, I pray to attain a high spiritual level like he he did. Therefore, today I have this opportunity to meet the Buddha and attain Arhat. Even though now I already attained sainthood, but my body is still having pain and aches very, very frequently, from my head into my toes, as if a needle has been touched into my head, from my head to my foot. It's painful, as if that needle even went through my bones. You see that? She's saying to them, you see that? The sin, no matter how long, how immeasurable time passed, you still had to bear it. Even then, I'm already an Ahat. You know, there are two different things. Merit, you can enjoy, but sin, you must still pay, endure. Yes, that's what it is. Because nothing has been done will be erased or deleted. Never. 500 young Bichuni, <laughs> young nuns, here in Thus, everybody was shaken with fear, tremble. And then they observe within themselves about the root of sexual desire and sensual pleasure and worldly greed and longing for worldly satisfaction as if as if it's a big bonfire. And then suddenly all their desire for sensual pleasure and worldly attainment finished. Cut off. Yeah. And then they observe all mundane pleasure and suffering as if it's a prison. Therefore, their karma also <laughs> cut off. And then in their heart, in their mind, everything is clear. And then they understood the truth, the, the true insight. Yeah? Maybe she initiated them, yeah, and they saw the light. And then they became a heart immediately over there. Because there's such a shaken fear within them. Therefore, they concentrated. <laughs> the mind cannot disturb them anymore. <laughs> so fearful of all these uh, consequences from bad karma that they 
their mind became still, so they can focus. Yeah, on the initiation time, maybe that's why they became arhat. Destroy all many many lifetime many ends of karmic hindrance and retributions. <laughs> 